Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Amplify's podcast, the podcast dedicated to medtech and pharma leaders, where we talk about innovation, the podcast that helps you and your team maximize your potential. Good day to you, Triveni. How are you doing? Hi, Guillaume. I'm doing very well. Thank you. It is a pleasure to have you uh, on the show. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Likewise, I'm excited. Tell us a bit more about yourself. I am the co-founding director of uh, Parallel Worlds Digital Twins. It's a digital twin platform. Uh, and we help medtech businesses and we'll discover how. How would you define digital twins, what it is, what's the market, uh, and, and let's go from there. Sure. In a very simple way, digital twin is nothing but a copy or a replica mm -hmm. of your real world uh, physical assets or your process or your operations mm -hmm. in the virtual space. Mm -hmm. When you look at a digital twin, it is almost like looking at absolutely your real business, mm -hmm. your real factory, your real laboratory, mm -hmm. uh, except that it's in a virtual space. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can look at it, you can move through it, you can operate it just like you would in, real, in the real world. Right. Um, why do we have this? So we have this because uh, some actions in the real world are expensive to take. Right. So, uh, and they take time and they have risks. Uh, what you can do with the digital twin is that you can take these actions through simulations. Uh, so you simulate everything just as it would happen in the real world, but you do it in the vi virtual world. So your risk uh, is mitigated. Your costs are low because you're not really doing anything on a physical equipment, mm -hmm. but your results and your data and your insights that you get are real. So you can then take actions in the real world based on whatever you've done in the digital. Tool. This is this is yeah. fascinating. So let's say I'm a big uh, medical device, medtech manufacturer. Mm -hmm. I sell a lot of, you know, CapEx, expensive equipment and so yeah. on. And I have this deal with a large hospital. I want to equip their uh, OR, their operating rooms or operating theaters with yeah. my new robot or whatever the case may be. Uh, Tell me the story of, you know, how uh, digital twins can revolutionize the way I sell it, the way I pitch it, but also the way I, I service. The salespeople want to sell well, and they know that a great sales pitch will help them convert, sa convert the sale. Servicing people want to service faster. You know, the faster they turn around a good service, the better their um, NPS or net promoter score is. Right. But there are problems. A great sales pitch is an expensive thing to get. Uh, servicing takes time and is, has uh, so many challenges in the in the process. So we want to solve these two problems by using digital twins. So uh, how we help a business is that when the sales team, which is your, your pre-sales, your salesperson and your technical sales team, mm -hmm. when they have to make a pitch to a customer, uh, you can't obviously bring your equipment or you could call your customer to your, you know, your uh, demo uh, site, but that's expensive too. Right. So what you can do is you can build an entire digital twin of the hospital or the laboratory, absolutely as it is, completely customized to your customer. So depending on your, how your customer's layout is, you can kind of arrange the equipment so that uh, the output of that equipment is the is the is highest and the maximum for that business for your customer's business. Right. So your customer is, is able to see uh, what they see is what they will get. Uh, they're able to walk through uh, the laboratory or the hospital facility. They're able to operate machines. You can even do a kind of workflow operation. Then they're able to simulate and see. Okay, if I increase this machine or in decrease that machine, what? How would it my output? So simulations are possible. Similarly, in servicing, uh, servicing has this huge problem where um, when there is an issue, um, it's a bit of an old school way of repairing that issue or dealing with that, that issue. The operator of the, of the equipment is blindsided to the technicality of the equipment. By that, I mean the machine number, its warranty, its spare parts, etc. That's not their job. So uh, how we help the service uh, uh, part of the kind of customer life cycle mm -hmm. is that because your end user is able to see the equipment uh, on the digital twin, they're able to tag the equipment. Your field service engineers are able to see exactly which equipment has been tagged. And therefore, because of this clarity of understanding that we bring, uh, and there's 
there is no confusion and there's high levels of accuracy. Uh, any repair or maintenance that has to be done can be done much faster than it's currently done. The other thing that I've seen because I've played with it myself is that it's super user friendly to do it. I mean, it's not like you need to be a designer uh, or have a very high advanced skills to create that digital twin. You're absolutely right. Uh, the technology of digital twins, Guillaume, right now is, um, I would say, largely centralized. So it's a few people uh, like, uh, you know, people who've studied CAD engineering or who know 3D design who are able to operate it. Uh, our going in kind of philosophy or belief is to make it distributed so or to make it democratized uh, because we believe that technology should be accessible to your regular salesperson, your service engineer, and even your end customer and user right. uh, is able to use it. We like to say that if you're familiar with your, you know, office suite of software, PowerPoint or Excel or you know how to play Lego, <laughs> then you can use our uh, system. It is literally that easy. As you said, you guys are really uh, democratizing it. Um, what's the market? The market for digital twins is about 18 to 20 billion US dollars globally. Uh, and its adoption and penetration amongst uh, let's see, the manufacturing sectors right. is also middling at about uh, 20%. Mm. So you can see the, the headroom for adoption is, is huge. So it's projected to grow at about 40% to, let's say, about $120, $130 billion by 2030 in about five years. Um, it only goes to show that this becomes a very um, uh, core and critical technology. And it's probably the way that business will be done and if, I, if you if you are in the business of a physical asset or physical systems, then you will need to have digital twins, pretty much like how AI is uh, is going to become the norm in business workflows. Visualizing your business in a virtual world will become the norm. What are the the use cases or the the capabilities that are exciting you guys? And you know. Uh, uh, on the on the roadmap or on the horizon. What's exciting in the future is the more data rich that visual representation gets. So if it is a uh, let's say a centrifuge system or a um, or a scanner, mm -hmm. um, the more data rich we can make that visual representation. And by data rich, I mean um, the more you can see its daily logs, its performance logs or is linked to real-time IoT data, mm. the more useful it be becomes. So we're working hard uh, on that. So that's on one hand, uh, which will improve your the our customers' productivity. We're also very excited with all the um, developments that are happening in the space of generative AI, because we embrace it. That only helps to make our platform uh, faster, um, making the models the 3D models will only become faster mm. and easier and more real photorealistic uh, with us embracing AI. Right. So we are able to make and deliver a better product for you and you are able to use it for more efficiency and productivity. Yeah. So I come from the world of um, products that you, you use every day and these products are typically... Uh, very simple products. I mean, a soap, a drink, a shampoo, they're simple products, uh -huh. but they mean, they could mean a lot for consumers if you tell the right stories. So I think the commonality between uh, the B2C world and the B2B world is at the end of the day, we're all humans. Everyone needs to hear a story and everyone has a problem. And that's what I think is uh, very interesting, right? A B2B uh, um, user, mm -hmm. whether they're in sales or service, has a challenge. And they want to know how you're going to help them solve that challenge. Sure. And it's our job to tell that story really well of how we're going to help, uh, you know, uh, how we understand and we're empathetic and we solve the challenge. So I feel, I feel that's kind of the similarity. Problems are problems, whether you're a consumer of uh, soap or a consumer of uh, a med tech device, a very advanced med tech device. Sure. We're still um, doing business with people at the end yes, of the Yes, so exactly, to, exactly. Right. And people like to hear stories of how you're going to help them, right? Sure. That's the commonality. I think uh, uh, the big difference in on my journey is go-to-market. Mm -hmm. uh, the go-to-market and also at the stage of business that we are at, uh -huh. which is a kind of like a startup to a scale-up stage. Uh, if you're at a from a if you're a B2C business, 
then you have to have a very different uh, go to market which uh, speaks to a large volume of people mm -hmm. uh, b2b business has to be very very targeted and very empathetic to the person that you're targeting to uh, you know to understand what their problems are so uh, the biggest learning for me is uh, moving from b2c to b2b is at this stage at this stage is that um, you need a large board of budget and cash uh, when you're in B2C because you need to speak to large volumes of people. Right. Uh, in B2B at this stage for us, it is, the, it is a network and the people that you know, right. which is the most priceless. Uh, yeah. It's worth its uh, weight in gold um, uh, because the people you know will help you, right. uh, you know, grow but, your business. Yeah, and, and there's so many we have on the show who talk about the importance of networking and never forgetting to do it because... For our customers or our partners in pharma and in medtech who are often part of large organizations, it's very easy to stay in the bubble of your company as opposed to meet the world and understand what's happening out there and how can you uh, leverage it to, to bring innovation back home. Uh, so, yeah, it's interesting to hear you talk about the importance of uh, of networking as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's what your podcast does. The, it, we are it really trying humbly to bring value and to, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Amplify the, the, <laughs> the word. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. Great service to uh, to the to this sector in this industry, I think. Thank yeah. you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Riveni, for <laughs> taking the time to come on the show. That was yeah. fantastic to learn more about your business and about the digital twin world which is yeah. uh, taking by storm the med tech and medical device thank you thank you Guillaume it was a pleasure it's great fun thank you everyone for watching this episode of Amplify's podcast you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube you can also listen to us on all the audio streaming platforms Spotify and so on in the video description right below, you will find the profile of Truveni. So don't hesitate to go look it up for more information about digital twins. Thank you so much for watching Amplify's podcast and speak to you soon. See you. Bye-bye.